Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, is this your first trip to Canada? Yep, first trip. And what's the experience like? Can you describe it? Well, when we're here, the villa where we're staying, it's... I'm, I'm really enjoying this, this part of it. We went into town the other day, and I just... There's too many people, and it's hot, and it's just not my thing, really. But the actual events themselves, going to the movie last night was incredible. Just the response, so, so much enthusiasm. It's obviously it just makes you feel really stimulated. And, you know, I'm going to be entering this, this industry full on in a, a few weeks after I finished my, my finals. And I just feel really excited to be a part of it. There's an, an, a, a massive enthusiasm for, for, for film as a medium. It's, it's really exciting. When you walked up those, those red steps, what, what were you thinking? I hope I don't fall over and put my heel through the back of my dress. That, unfortunately, that is what I was thinking. But, um, but coming out afterwards, what was really brilliant is we came out after the film. And the response had been really good inside. And we stood at the top of the, of the steps. There was a sea of people. Amazing. Even if people were just, I mean, I always say it's just people just walking along and it's that sort of crowd thing where you think, oh, what's going on here? And so you just more people latch on. But it was really incredible. Just, Amazing. What's the best experience you've had here? Here. The speedboat. I don't know. It's all been good. I think standing at the top of the steps. What about the speedboat? After the movie. Well, the speedboat was good because Seth, who plays James in the film, he was leaning, leaning with his back outside the boat. And the, the drivers, do you call them drivers? People who, who drive boats? Pilots. Pilots? He tipped, he tipped it over, so Seth's body was completely immersed in the water. That was fun. Um, do you think that you'd like to come back here in the future? Is this, is this, is this a, you remember this is a pleasurable event? Of course, you're out here. So it would depend on, on what we were promoting. I wouldn't come here just for the sake of being here. I'd come attached to a film or you know, something that was being seen at the festival if it was good. I think it's always difficult when you're promoting something that you don't feel... 100% positive about. Um, this has been particularly a particularly good experience because I'm very confident about the film and I so enjoyed working with everybody involved and I think it's a very strong piece of cinema so I feel, I feel um, confident to be able to talk about the film because I feel confident about the film itself. Um, but no, I don't think I'd come back if I wasn't involved with something outside the movie industry. I wouldn't mind coming here when the festival wasn't on, just to see what it's like then, because it's very, it's very pretty. The coastline's very nice. What about the star treatment? Do you find being treated as, as a star, particularly this massive media event like this, is it overwhelming? Sometimes I just get a bit confused because you just, if you believe this to be a reality, then I think you can get into trouble. You just have to. It's, it's like. Oh, I don't know. Because I mean, I, I go, I'll go home tomorrow, or I'll be back in college next week, and no one's going to talk to me the way they talk to me here, or some people anyway. And that, 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 can, be, that can make you feel quite insecure, because it's quite a confusing situation to be in, because you wonder you know, how it affects your identity, who are you, and where, you know, where do you stand? Is it sort of when you're at home, or is it this sort of thing? Um, how do people talk to you here? I was curious. Sorry, just speak to you. Don't rock. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Um, how do people just sort of this overzealous enthusiasm for everything? And it's things I find it quite hard to to respond. I don't know how to respond to compliments when people say, "Oh, you were great in the movie," or and I know that people aren't going to tell me. I never have the you know the other side to the coin. Like there are people who say you were great in the movie, but the people that didn't like you in the movie won't come up and say, "I thought you were terrible." So you only have a one-sided opinion. And you've always got to remind yourself that there is a flip side to it, um, and that's not being cynical. It's just being sort of practical because you can end up feeling like a bit of a space cadet and thinking that you're really great when you're not. What was it like working with? Him? Have you spoken to him? He's the funniest man. So, <laughs> he's just really, I think he's just very happy and it just comes across the way he is as a person and very down to earth. There's none of the star quality about him at all. Um, and working with him, I was a bit intimidated to begin with. Firstly, because we hadn't had any rehearsals and I hadn't met him before and I had scenes which were quite intimate. Not love scenes necessarily, but there, there did have to be quite a strong familiarity. 
and uh, but right from the word go I knew that I could feel very comfortable with him because he's he's not afraid to let you know that he feels nervous that he feels worried and he'll ask my opinion about things and so and once he started to do that I realized that we were very much on the same level we were there for the same purpose and we were you know there wasn't a hierarchy that he was more important than me or whatever and I really enjoyed working with him and he's very responsive and it's lovely working with a good actor really really just makes it so easy he made it very easy for me tell me about some of the research that you did for or the research that you did for it's very interesting it is i think in some ways it politicized me to um, the whole issue of slavery and and i can i can really understand the position that black americans feel they're in today in terms of political and social issues I hadn't really been aware of it at all because in England our history is obviously um, limited to, to English history. So that was obviously very, it was very insightful and in terms of actually trying to find material for Sally Hemings, everything that was in the script, that, that's all that exists for Sally Hemings as a character. She's almost fictional in terms of how much actual um, textual material, documentation that there is. So my job really was just to get a grasp for the period, a feel for the period, um, to look at the historical context. And I came across, I went to history books basically, and then I had an accent to do and I had to try and get to grips with that. And I also wanted to give her a certain body language which I felt would be fitting for the period, for the environment, coming from the south of America. It's obviously going to have a different body language to my more uptight English body language. Um, so it was quite a complex, for me it was a complex character because she was so different from me, particularly physically in the way she sounded. So I had quite a lot of work to do. Um, so a lot of it, more of it was to do with me trying to rationalise it and being imaginative as opposed to actually taking on board written facts. Because well, there weren't so enough. There weren't, yeah. there weren't very many. Yeah. She's not a very, a very sympathetic kind of player. It's mm -hmm. interesting what you're saying about, saying about body language because I would have thought that, I would have, would have never thought that because I would have thought that a woman in her position would, wouldn't would have been an open or would, wouldn't have had a necessarily different carriage from somebody, as you say, uptight. Well, this, that's the paradox that I wanted to um, employ for, for the film. I wanted to show a distinction. Well, she moves from she has this false sense of security and a false sense of who she is and that she believes that she's incredibly free. And so I wanted to have that irony in the film. You see this person who's incredibly relaxed with her body, very free and loving life, spirited, happy, particularly, and it's particularly interesting to see it within all the affectations of aristocratic Parisian life. And so she believes that she has this, this great sense of freedom, but we as an audience and everyone else knows that she's confined by one of the most rigid restrictions that there is, which is obviously slavery. And what I wanted to show was that as she becomes more politically and socially aware through her brother James, um, that by the end of the movie she realizes that her freedom is a very, is, it's a, a, f a fabricated freedom. I mean, it's, it's totally false that she's only free within this, so it's an, within the illusion um, that's, set, that, that's, that's set up um, by her being, you know, one of Jefferson's family members, when in fact she is She's a prisoner within that. Did, did, this, uh, did this character, playing this character, uh, lend anything else to your life outside of the awareness of the African American culture? And the Apart from that, well, that's such a huge, that's been such a huge issue for me. There isn't room for much else, to be honest. Um, I suppose meeting Merchant Ivory, working with someone like Nick Nolte, and working with Greta and Seth and Gwyneth, you know, having met these people, it's, it's a pretty big deal. And, you know, having spent time with them and their influence has made me see things differently. And I feel like I'm a bit of a, a fuller person. <laughs> but it's true. I feel lucky to have spent time with these people. I really do. Wait till after your exams, you'll feel an even fuller person, oh, I'm sure. I hope so. Can I ask, can I ask, can I ask yourself a really silly question? Say, no. <laughs> like silly questions, yeah, but um, serious questions, please. Yes, uh, which is who do you play, and what does your character feel? Short. I can't be sure. You know, I really, I'm so. Um, what what your character goes through? In, uh, I play. Well, I play a woman called Sally Hemmings, or she's a girl. Oh, to the camera. No, to, to the camera. Okay. 
Sally Hemings, um, who's 14 years old, takes place in the late 18th century. And what happens to her, she, she goes from America to Paris to join Jefferson, who is, um, who is in France, who's ambassador for America and France. And she is one of his slaves. Why did she go to, uh, to Paris from America? She went to, she goes to Paris from America to accompany Jefferson's youngest daughter. She goes as the youngest daughter's ward to look after the child. And once, she, once she's there, she become, becomes involved in quite an intriguing story of uh, how Jefferson supposedly had a relationship with this young slave girl for, it went on for about 30 years, we think. 